Madam President, you would have to confer the title you conferred on me years ago when we visited your state, and you made me an Obong. But I haven't seen the, the crown. I, I will focus on solutions. We have problems, I mean, we know it. So there's no point repeating that rice is 60,000, petrol is up. We all know that. I think what we need to look at is like you said, do we move forward? That I think is the issue. I, as a 70 year old, started civil rights when I was 29. It's a long time, but I still have hope. I have hope. But I would like to draw attention, I'm happy the NSA is here, because I also studied counterintelligence and insurgency policy at SOAS in 1980. We need peace security to develop. We can't win, in my opinion, the war by armed forces. So I will suggest to the National Assembly to consider the possibility of inviting the ethnic nationalities, the owners of Nigeria. You know, they passed national conferences. I was one, attended them. We have no stake in Nigeria in the sense that I am not an ethnic nationality leader. I suspect inviting these leaders together with our traditional rulers who I think are being ignored in the process, we might be able to resolve this Boko Haram, IPOP. By the way, my brother was kidnapped yesterday in, in uh, on nature. Thank God he was released. He said his name was Namdi Obiora. When they searched his bag and saw my name, they said, you can go. So I'm, I'm thankful for that. But that is not what we want. For the president to make progress with the president of the, national, of the Senate, peace must reign. So the first task is how do we find peace? Would it be by the armed forces? My answer is no. It will be by executive and legislative process to find how we can draw in Ohaneze, Afenifere, Pandef, Arewa, the traditional rulers that are being ignored. I personally believe they have a role in the constitutional process. If this is done, I feel we will achieve peace. So that's number one. I would like us to also consider moving away from nine to five transactional legislative process to transformational uncommon process, which Mr. President here is familiar with. We need to change how, we must have an objective. I will offer 10, 10 objectives that will help. Mr. President has made three tough decisions. I agree with some and not all, but the removal of subsidy, entirely agree. It was a market correction. It's had an impact. So it's how we deal with the impact by legislation that would be helpful. Now, for us to have had a unsettled constitution for 23 years ought to end with the 10th National Assembly. 23 years is a long time to be discussing the Constitution. So I would suggest that the first thing would be how do we get a new Constitution? There are two ways. The first is what the National Assembly is doing now, which I disagree with. I prefer 
the solution proffered by the late Ben Wabeze. He refers to the extraordinary powers of the National Assembly. The National Assembly has four types of legislative powers. Only one is in use. The National Assembly is the National Assembly sitting as the House of Assembly of the federal government, pursuant to Section 4.2 of the Constitution. But please check Section 4.1. The National Assembly is the National Assembly sitting as the sovereign parliament. Section 4.1. So the National Assembly is at once the House of Civil Assembly of the federal government and the House of, Civil of Assembly of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. In fact, if you recall when the National Assembly was grouping to find powers to invoke the doctrine of necessity, Section 4.1 was the power to use. Now, Section 2.1 gives a very vital power to, in the Constitution. It describes Nigeria as indissoluble, indissoluble. So the sovereign power of Nigeria is to be found in Section 2.1. And there, there's only one citizen that carries the sovereign authority of Nigeria. This, as far as I researched, there's only one citizen who is referred to as the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. And that is President Tinubu, no other person. Every other person is either Federation, AGF, uh, CJN, but no other person is referred to. And there's a purpose for that. So the president of Nigeria carries with him the authority of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. The Federation is not a political entity. It's merely a subdivision within the sovereign Republic of Nigeria. So it's important that the National Assembly, in carrying out its legislative functions, will understand that it has a trinity of powers, the final one being the FCT. So when that scope is understood, Professor Wabeze says there are two broad ways you can deal with the Constitution. One is Section 8 and Section 9, which you are using, but has taken us 23 years in altering the Constitution. The other one is what he calls constitutional replacement, which happened in 1963, because the Constitution right now is not an act. It is a schedule attached to an act. So Professor Mwabeze says, if you invoke Section 4.1 and Section 4.4 of the Constitution, all you need to do is detach the schedule from the act and replace it with the new Constitution. And that is the matter resolved. Rather than every uh, new assembly, we keep discussing the same issue. Because we can't make economic and political progress if we have a discussion that is lasting 23 years. So that is the uh, point I would like to leave. Second point will be the electoral process. President Tinubu here had a petition, P2B versus uh, President Tinubu. When I checked all the petitions, I actually found out that the petitions would have been best addressed to INEC. P2B has no quarrel with Mr. President. If you look at what he's, he, he, he stated in his petition, it was like a referee refereeing a match and allowing a goal for Chelsea. And then Chelsea petitions against, uh, say, Arsenal. Well, it's not Arsenal, it's the referee. So we need to adopt the Kenyan model. The Kenyan model is very simple. A petitioner presents a petition which, if it raises reasonable cause, it convokes a tribunal. The tribunal turns to their own INEC, not to the respondent. So justify the election. Was the, were the PVCs working? Was the uh, BVAX working? Those are not issues that would concern Mr. President. Those are issues that would be addressed to the Election Management Board. In that way, you will find that the pressure will now turn to the Election Management Board to do their work properly. Because when there's a challenge, the petitioner and the respondent don't fight each other. It is the 
INEC that carries the brunt. Once that is done, and I was a member of the OWAS panel, everything will change. And I also recommend the unbundling of INEC. It's doing far too much. INEC is the largest printer of papers in Nigeria. That's not their job. It's not their job to be printing. INEC is doing far too many things. So in, 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 in the waste petition, uh, in the waste um, report, we recommended removing the function of regulating political parties by the creation of a political party regulation authority. We recommended creating the Electoral Offenses Commission. So I would urge the Tenth Assembly, presided over by its chairman, President Babio, to simply enact the recommendations. And that will be the end. That was in 2007 or 8. So many years have passed. The Electoral Act makes a mockery of democracy. So we can correct that mockery by passing all the recommendations of uh, the OAS panel. <laughs> the legal and judicial governance process. By the way, I'm speaking only to a narrow issue of development. I'm talking about governance. So governance is the process by which you can elevate economic and political matters to its optimum. I feel now that we are operating suboptimally. And if governance is well applied across what I'm saying, we can get to optimum performance. The insertion of Section 315 in the Constitution is a horrendous mistake of lazy people. Horrendous error. So what Section 315 does, it allows, for instance, the law, statute of, of uh, frauds, that was passed in the UK in 1635 to still be on our books. In the case of Rwanda, Paul Kegama took a different view. He set up a National Reform Commission, and they amended, modified, and introduced a 1,000 new laws in three months. So, Mr. President of the Senate, may I respectfully urge that we do away with Section 315, we review our laws, expunge all that is unnecessary, obnoxious, dead, some of the laws passed by when Mr. President was very active in the uh, civil rights movement, all the laws that the military passed, why are they on our books when we're a democracy? So that ought to go. Then, as the president of the Nigerian Bar Association between 206 and 208, I know we have suffered legal failure. If you suffer heart failure, you are dead. So for all intents and purposes, we don't have an effective legal system. And in my practice, a lot of clients come and say, if we invest, how long would it take us to go through the courts? And when I say five to 10 years, they don't want to come. So if we're looking for investments, we've got, to, we've got to decapitate the legal system of Nigeria. We have to rewrite it. It, it can't stand. It's too old fashioned. The same thing with the judicial system. You know, it's sort of ironic for me to say this, not only as a former president, as a senior advocate, as a former member of the Nigerian uh, Judicial uh, Commission, but m when my dad was CJ of uh, East Central State, we all wanted to protect the judiciary from military incursion. So we ring fenced the judiciary so everybody is afraid. No, 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 don't touch their money. Don't do this, don't do this. And that philosophy carries forward today. The judiciary should not be as aloof as it wants to wake out. I was the first, accompanied by my brother, Wale Olanyekbaku, who applied, because we felt we were qualified, to sit in the Supreme Court. The mafia there, threw us out, they threw us out. You know why? Because we still mix administration of justice, 
which the National Assembly cannot, with respect, interfere, how they do their work, with judicial administration, which the National Assembly can make laws. There should be a law governing the process of appointment of senior judges. We can't leave it to the National Judicial Council. All the law, all the Constitution says is, once you are 15 years, you are qualified. But the National Judicial Council and the Supreme Court judges have formed a mafia. And we don't get there. And the Supreme Court is all the This is, with the greatest respect, the worst Supreme Court I have seen in my 45 years of practice. It has to change. A challenge for the National Assembly is to enact a law that deals with judicial administration. I didn't say administration of justice, so you can't go there because that is the internal workings of the judiciary. But judicial administration, no, the National Assembly can make laws. You pass a law so that I do not depend on the Chief Justice of Nigeria if I wanted to become a judge. The law will be passed stating the criteria to become a judge. You will find a big change. So I make that very strong recommendation to the National Assembly. I now turn to a point which I think deserves special attention. We can't pretend that there's hunger in the land. There's a lot of hunger. But I commend uh, President Tinubu for the bold decisions he took. Very few would have taken it. You have to be commended to remove. In fact, I don't know whether you really thought about it because you said it in your, in your, in your acceptance speech. But that was the correct decision, sir. What needs to follow? What needs to, no, don't clap, please. I don't, I'm not interested in claps. What needs to follow is the tough job that the National Assembly must do. You must recognize as leaders of your people that they're suffering. So you must now support the president with consequential legislation, consequential legislation that will give them peace. I have introduced in my office, I never knew I would do that, and it's working, and some of them I begin to have pot belly. I've introduced breakfast and lunch. They, because they can, if you pay, for instance, your driver 100K, rice is 60K, how, is, how will you afford it? You can't. So I'm forced to now create a, 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 a cooking staff for them. That means, Mr. President, not, your, not you, sir, this one. That means, Mr. President, that your work is heavy. Your work is heavy. And you know, the only, please remember this, oh, the only way people will respect, I saw you running at the stadium, which means you are loved in, back in Uyu. If you are not, they won't be there. The only way that all of our political leaders will be relevant in four, five, six years is to do good today. There's an urgency. Do good today so that you can walk the streets and they say, this is our man. Do good today. Make sure you use the, don't sleep. Do not let, be awake. Be awake, be worried about what your people want you to do. Then when you leave, you will find peace. You will need to be protected because you have done what people wanted. They say, ah, I see what you, great man, great man. But if those things that people want haven't taken place, no way. So this point I'll make now is important. The most important thing we need is economic governance. As I said, Mr. President has taken a number of tough decisions. The current, the Naira is devalued. Um, the only one I haven't heard Mr. President talk about, and I'm sure you will, is how to, personally, I don't like the word restructure. I prefer devolution. The center is too powerful. So I like to see something around devolution so that many people can participate. But in the sphere of economic policy, my call attention, Mr. President of the Senate, to section 16 of the Constitution, which actually makes Nigeria a socialist state. I'm not sure if, if people are aware of it. It makes Nigeria a socialist state. 
please, when you read it carefully, the commanding heights of the economy belong to the, to the government. That's not the intention. I think the intention is to make Nigeria a mixed economy, a liberal economy. So if we don't get the ideological basis of Nigeria's political economy right, nothing else will work. So I recommend that section 16 should be modified. Now, the national economy has five fingers. It has the hard economy, it has the soft economy, it has the blue economy, it has the green economy, and it has the brown economy. All these will be tied by three important things. Fiscal, monetary, and trade policy. Right now, Nigeria has no trade policy, and that, I think, is a big mistake. The last trade policy was in 2017. The CBN, they work on monetary. The CBN is carrying far too much responsibility. And quite sensibly, in the UK, their own CBN, the Bank of England, devolved power to two great institutions. And I, need, I think we need to see it here. The Prudential Regulation Authority. Their work is to make sure that the public trust we have in our banks is indeed followed. Our banks are not traders. It is a shame that me standing before you, I have never had a loan in this country because they want my grandmother who is dead to come. In the UK, I've had loans because the system works. The Prudential Regulation Authority in the UK ensures that the banks work. In fact, some of us keep saying, how is it in spite of all this poverty, the banks are making tremendous profit? How is it? So where is the money going? We've got to ask, where is it going? Then the banks, if they misbehave, you have the Financial Conduct Authority to keep them in check. So the CBN needs to devolve two important powers, supervision and conduct. In the UK, it is retained within the structure of the Bank of England. But there is a huge institution that ensures that oxygen, money, is in the system. How can Nigeria be described as a country that wants to be in the first 10 when it is not a credit economy. No country survives without a credit system. Nigeria is not a credit economy. So it is a matter of urgency that the National Assembly should look for ways to create a system which economists call gearing, to gear. If you have 100 Naira, and there's access to, to, to finance. You can gear it. When you gear it, then we all become the better. So gearing is crucial to create a credit economy. But it's important that the laws are there. Right now, the laws are not there. So these are some of the tasks that I urge the National Assembly to consider. The, one of the most important under uh, economic governance is a national credit guarantee cooperation. These are people who give credit. They see your idea, it is good, they give you the money. We need that. When all these are in place, you'll be very surprised. The Nigerian economy will gear up. When I wrote a letter to the Minister of Finance in the last government, the response was, yes, they, we had forgotten Murphy. You see the name? Murphy, Ministry of Finance Incorporated. In her response, she accepted that Ministry of Finance Incorporated had, this is only a preliminary study, 33 trillion naira. And we said we're poor. And our so-called nonsense budget is 27 trillion for a country of 200 million? No. Mr. President, sir. To you, sir. Mr. President of the Senate, our budget next year should not be less than 100 trillion. If it is, if it is, then we have failed. I don't want to say you have failed. I'll say we have failed. But I know you know what I mean. 100 trillion. 
Go and look for the money. Look for it. There are 56,000 uncompleted projects around Nigeria. The federal lands alone. The money there is unbelievable. Look at the federal secretariat. It's wasted there for the last 40 years, yet we cannot build the, the road from Ibadan to Lagos when that is 140 billion. What is it doing there? Sell it. Sell it. And don't be involved in things that the private sector can do. And here I talked to Zach and I told him, and I'm happy that the president's uh, uh, committee mentioned it. No parastatal or department or agency, thank you, should collect revenue. It's not their job. Nimasa, customs, it's not your job. The job of customs is enforcement of customs regulations, not collecting revenue. So all that collection should go to a new national revenue agency. They are the ones to collect money, not the individual parastatals that don't even remit. You will then find that the money is not as difficult as you, are looking, you, you think it is. You can get the money. Because I have uh, uh, only five minutes, I'll just quickly show you. Because the president has given a task. Nigeria would be a thousand trillion dollar economy in six, seven, let's, let me say 10. It is more than doable. It is doable, but it will require absolute hard work. And that's why I'm pointing out to, look at Solid Minerals, my friend, that I haven't seen him daily. He can do it. He can do it. Nigeria has about 44 or 45 absolutely required minerals, but not the laws. Not the laws. We have legal failure. Now, let me just return to a point I, I missed in, um, in uh, under economic governance. The difference between revenue and capital. There are different things. So revenue is the public revenue is consecrated by section 162 of the constitution. Why is it that our leaders only concentrate on tax and, non, and not non-tax? There's a lot more money in non-tax than tax. So if you put tax and non-tax together, you're looking at more than 100 trillion. When uh, His Excellency Oyetola had um, his uh, meeting with us in Lagos, I showed him where to find the money. I showed him. So we can, we can get the money. So it's, it's possible. So tax and non-tax. Public revenue, federal government only has so much. But it is not federal government public revenue that drives the economy. It's capital. Capital. What is capital? Capital is the national asset. Let me just take housing. In Lagos, 98% of the housing have no title. No title. Therefore, you can't take a loan. Nobody will give you. I, standing before you, I have never gotten a loan. But I got a loan in the UK. I bought the first house. Because the legal infrastructure is there, I got the second one. Aren't you happy for me? I got the second one. I went back and I got the third one. But here I build standalone. I build one, I build the next one. Why? The legal infrastructure to draw capital does not exist. And I recommend you read Mystery of Capital by Hernando de Soto. It's a fantastic book. I presume predictably that capital not revenue, is what will drive this $1,000 uh, trillion dollar economy. Not public revenue, because public revenue is consumed. You don't have much of it. So I really urge you look at the differences between public revenue and capital. Uh, solid minerals, I've already mentioned it. Trade policy. We can't be a dumping ground. We need to have our own local WTO, which I call the National Trade Office. The last gentleman there who came from WTO, the late ambassador, also, but did a tremendous job, but he wasn't empowered. So we need two things here. A trade policy, we need a National Trade Office established by a parliament, 
then we need trade remedies legislation. So the trade remedies legislation is the countervailing power that checks when to raise tariffs. If, Obama, if um, Trump could do that, the so-called liberal democracy, why can't we do that? They tell us that, no, keep, 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 keep your doors open and they pour things here. Now, if people keep pouring things here, how can you grow? So we need to worry about the appropriate trade policy. We, right now, Nigeria is a dumping ground. And as a dumping ground, we're unlikely to develop. They would be dumping. China is dumping. The China-Nigeria trade agreement ought to be torn to pieces. It ought to be torn to pieces. It is so unbalanced. We have about 29 multilateral and bilateral treaties. Some were written in 1959 when we were not even independent. I hope you know that on the, 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 the people in Paris, they still collect money from Mali, from Niger, and all that. That cannot be if you want to be a sovereign country. Maritime governance, that's my specialty. Well harnessed, I told His Excellency the Minister of Marine and Blue Economy. And by the way, Mr. President, thank you very much for that. That was a great move to create that ministry. It will be the cash cow if the laws are there. If, for instance, I told President Babiu, I'm your surveyor. You told me to go and survey your land, which you said is only a thousand uh, square meters. And I tell you, no, it's actually five. You say, really? You say, please fence it. I was part of the team that studies, studied Nigeria's EEZ. And we're one of eight countries that the UNCLOS gave an additional 150. We're doing nothing. The Chinese come in the top restaurants in, uh, in uh, Hong Kong, they refer to it as Nigerian tiger prawns. We are one of the world's leaders in tuna. We have such wealth in our aqua systems that it's a shame we don't understand how to use it. We need to have strong laws. The last time I spoke, I said, we need to have a coast guard. How can you not have a coast guard? Anyone can come to your place steal your fish in the night and run away. A coast guard, Mr. President, crucial. A coast guard for all sorts of things. So the one, million, the one trillion dollar economy is possible. Piece of cake. It just requires what one of my partners sent to me, smart. National Assembly must be specific. Don't get up at 9 and come to work at 11 and leave at 12. No. You must be there for the people. Mr. President, I want to see you in four years looking older. <laughs> so that you would have been worn out. You would get up in the night, walk in. The work of the National Assembly must be measurable. Must be able to measure it. It must be achievable. There's no point saying, see, we'll do all this and then you do nothing. It must be relevant. And it must be time bound because the first four years. So if SMART is applied to these principles I have enunciated, I can assure you the price of, which one again is it? The price of rice. The price of rice will go down. We are a great, blessed nation. No climate wahala. No all those things. Ah, you see, uh, no, no Gaza. No this, no this. What's wrong with us? Leadership. When I see two great men here, Mr. President here, my neighbor who abandoned me, <laughs> Mr. President here, who conferred on me, Obong, so I'm waiting for my crown. I can only wish Mr. President the best. We, we, look, what Nigerians want is not court cases. So let me tell you, they are not interested. They are not in, that is the private affair of the PDP and the APC. Now that the APC is there, make us happy. That is all we want.